So welcome back friends. It is Sunday and Sunday is a good day for working in the shop. Today, I have a great video for you guys. We're going to be doing some shade tree mechanicking, some shade tree fabricating on the adventure van. That means putting in jack seat. So pretty big job. Um, I've done a ton of research on it. I think I've got everything that I need to do it today. Hopefully we won't have to make any midday runs to the Home Depot, uh, but I'll bring you along for that and we'll, uh, let's just jump right on it. So here it is, today's project. Boy, this was a hard to find little monster. The original factory two passenger full size seat for the transit with, check this out, wrong side, reclinability. Reclinability, this is nice. I wanted the factory seats uh, because I want everything to be, you know, crash safe. I want this, I want this install to be as good as or if not better than factory factory install because you know my most precious cargo is going to be in this and uh, I want it to be safe. So I'll show you the stuff I put together for the install and then we'll get on uh, the first thing will be just pull the fuel tank out. So this is the base of the factory seat and you can see right there this has got a lever in the back. You pull that lever and it's a quick release. So you can take the seats in, you can add them, subtract them, uh, but what stays is this heavy duty bracket right here. So this is what's gonna be permanently mounted. And it looks like the Philistines on eBay, from where I bought this, I did kind of a poor job in cutting this. It must've been a track for multiple seats and they cut it off uh, for us to use with the single. So we'll have to clean that up. But let's take this over to the bench and we'll talk a little bit about the mounting, how this is gonna mount. Okay, so the challenge is, is we have to mount this in a secure way that, that it's not going to pull out uh, and be as good, if not better than factory, as I said. So this here will mount on the inside. So when I check this, this is eighth inch steel. It's got, uh, it's a pretty heavy duty bracket. And so I match that up for the, we're basically going to sandwich this in through the unibody because this is, doesn't have a traditional frame. It's a unibody construction. We're going to sandwich it like this and then we're gonna tie everything together with these grade eight, grade eight bolts. Now, if you're not familiar, if, not all bo bolts are created equally here. You can see that these bolts here are sp specifically uh, for you know, really important things. Like you'll, you'll find them on suspension components, steering components on automotive. As far as industrial, I don't know all those applications, but what they are is they have a really high tensile strength. They're very hard and they're very tough bolts. And when you have something that maybe have extreme loads on it in an accident, like a seat with all that leverage, you want to have the best, best. There is, I believe, a grade 10 as well, um, but grade 8s, I think, are typically probably pretty well, um, well, it's probably good enough for something like this. And you can tell a grade 8 bolt because it'll have the hashes on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then a grade 5 below that has, I don't remember, maybe it's three and then you know they go up and down. So that's what we'll be using on this mount. And of course, to finish everything off, this being just, just raw metal, we'll prime it, we'll paint it with a good automotive enamel, and then when everything's said and done, we'll finish it off with a rubberized undercoating, very similar to what they would you know, seal everything off in the under, underneath of the van uh, from the factory. So I don't know exactly what these the dimensions of these brackets are going to be uh, but while we're what well, one thing I want to do first off is we'll get everything prepped and we'll get the primer and the couple coats of paint on it uh, so that can be drying while we're pulling the tank out and then when we cut everything to length then of course we can just you know where we drill the holes we can just touch it up a bit and and the ends and we're not waiting for it to dry on it so usually when I have jobs like this I'll go ahead and get the painting done first. So I'll just use a little bit of mineral spirit here because this is greasy. This is greasy from the, from the steel yard and it's gonna have a protective film of oil and goo on it that the paint is not going to adhere to. So we wanna clean that because a paint job is only as good as the prep. So everything is nice and dry and super clean. We're gonna put our first coat of primer on there. If you ever wonder how long to, shattle, to shake a rattle can, 60 seconds. 60 seconds vigorously is, will t is typically enough to get everything mixed up. So we'll put nice coat of primer on here. This channel like this is really a great material to use for this because 
you know, I see a lot of guys using big fat quarter inch uh, flat bar, which is fine, but it's, it's really overkill. It's way bigger than the top set section of the seat and their heart's hard to drill through and all that. So having these, these sides bent up there, it gives you that strength of the, you know, kind of like a, an angle bracket on both sides, but without all of the, you know, just the mass and weight and difficulty to, to work with. The next step is we've got to remove the fuel tank. So I drove around and around until the fuel is <laughs> all, all gone and it's barely made it home. So it's pretty well empty and that will make a big difference. So uh, what I've got is I've got, I just jacked up the rear there, put it up on some jack stands. Now you guys who haven't worked around vehicles a lot, you know, make sure that when you get under your vehicles like this, put them on jack stands. Jack stands uh, will keep you safe. You don't want to uh, trust a jack uh, because if that were to blow a seal or to fail, you would be doomed. I'll tell you a funny story. I had a, a friend of my granddad was working on a car and he was underneath of it and he was relying on the jack stand and he was, he was on his creeper. His granddad's old, look at that. They don't make creepers like this anymore. <laughs> granddad had, to, had this, I, I don't remember him not having this, but this is way, goes way, way back. Uh, look at the quality there, how thick all that stuff is. That big, heavy cast steel. And the other ones that they make now are half, he got so mad one time, I remember some guy loaned it to uh, somebody and they brought it back and they broke it. So he'd fix that and braze that on there and my Nana would reupholster this, you know, every few years, but that's a, it's a pretty nice creeper. Helps you get up underneath of there, you know, that was the way mechanicin was done before everything got so fancy with hydraulic lifts and everything. I don't think mechanics probably even use these anymore today. What were we going on about? Oh, so his friend was underneath on his creeper like this, and he was he had an old rifle barrel. I still have it. It's around here somewhere that he used as a pry bar. And he was uh, up underneath there. He had to replace a leaky main seal on his rear oil pan. And he was using that barrel to scrape all the gunk and the grease off to kind of see, you know, what it was going to take to replace that rear main seal. About that time, the jack failed. And he had the barrel positioned just right that when the, when the vehicle came down, it was a big truck. It came down, it was resting on that barrel on the back of flange of the oil pan, just teetering back and forth. <laughs> he, he slithered out from underneath of there, you know, no more and got out. And the, of course the whole thing fell off and would have crushed him. You know, two wheel drive truck doesn't have clearance. It wasn't like, you know, some of these big tall ones today. So don't get under your car without a jack stands. Oh goodness, here we go. This is the first ever YouTube creep, creeper cam. Oh, don't have the clearance. A creeper cam. We'll get over here and where we can see something. It's really, I'm really disappointed that I believe that all the bolts on the transit are the metric system. We're gonna have to use our metric system. Let's take a look at the tank here. Flip ye old iPhone screen around. Okay, so here is our tank. It's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, looks like it's being held on by one, two, three brackets or six bolts, and it's a plastic tank all tanks are plastic these days shouldn't be too much trouble they have a kind of a quick attach you know the fuel lines are coming in the vents are coming in right here they'll have a quick attach on the top that we won't be able to access until we drop that tank down a little bit then of course the filler tube will disconnect that um, and then we can lower it down with the floor jack gear very carefully because if you lower it down too far you break those fuel lines and those vent lines so we'll have to watch that but uh Let's get our metric, our metric tools going here. This is the, about the only thing I've ever bought from Snap-on that was a great disappointment to me. This is the worst mechanics light that I've ever bought. First off, the, the lens went all bad on me and it's all ganky and it doesn't take up, it couldn't handle the heat of the fluorescent bulb and is disformed and it's got this silly hook on there that's you break your fingernail off trying to get it off and you have to get another tool i.e. a panel tool or pocket knife just to activate the stupid clamp I, I flops around I ne I've never liked this thing everything else they make of course is excellent metric system I guess it's just inevitable alright so we'll pull the sides these cross members out Long, long old bolts. They'll leave the center one until last. Oops. 
gonna go ahead and disconnect that fuel filler here before we take that last cross member or bracket down across there chances are the fuel tank is gonna fall off the jack because I just using a floor jack I don't have a proper jack and then uh, it'll drag all those lines off with it and break them and then we'll have to go to the dealer or the dealership and spend hundred and fifty dollars on the new one but we're gonna try to avoid that I just cannot get to the lines without lowering that tank so we'll have to do our best one trick I have learned with these fuel tanks is when they have multiple straps on there you can take the ones off the front and leave the rear one kind of loose and then the tank you can see will hang down and sometimes you can reach your paw up in there and get those clips loose but the more I look at it the good folks at Ford they were very smart what did they do I'll show you what they did here uh, they gave us disconnects disconnects here on the outside so this assembly on top of the tank uh, can be separated down here below so when we drop it we don't we don't break everything so that is really nice right there one tool that's just indispensable for working on new vehicles because everything now is plastic clips and little silly things you know it's just they don't use nuts and bolts like they used to is the pant this snap-on panel tool this configuration right there is just it's perfect I <coughs> disassembled vehicles at a wrecking yard for years and years I disassembled hundreds of them and this is the tool that I kept on me this was more important to me than a pocket knife uh, for all these little clips and things because you get these little silly things here that have to, they've all and everything's got a safety on it you know it's all got a backup on it so they're hard to finagle hard to figure out but usually this tool is really good at undoing all these little there we go let pop that out there so if we pop that out there we should be able to find another little pincher right there there we go piece of cake okay there should be another one down here that was actually quite painless. Those two clips came off easier than I expected. I did get a nice face full of a good half a pint of fuel under high pressure right in my ear, uh, but I've got that washed off and it shouldn't burn for too much longer. Now I think I'll just crawl under here and I think because it's such a lightweight tank, I can just manhandle it out and creep out of here and just have it on my stomach. <coughs> oh, wait a minute, that's, that's the carrier bearing. <coughs> I'm so sure that's the specific proper torque specification on that. Uh, there we go. This is that's all we want here. Oh, why would anyone do this for a living? Good grief. My hat's off to you. It's a hard job. Everything goes right. Now oh, I got the air hose in the way. Me and the, me and the fuel tank should be able to scoot out here. There'll be a couple dozen sockets under the wheels. Uh oh, something's still hanging on there. What we got? Of course we do. Oh, we got the, we got the electrical for the fuel pump. We're not done yet. <laughs> All right, I can see one of them. I, oh. <laughs> it's, it's always, it's always something. Always something. If it's got an engine, it'll give you trouble. Oh, good grief. demon plug there it's like a yeah. there we go okay now we're free I think yeah that'll do it there it is the old fuel tank is out I'm sure it's gonna go in much easier than it came out so if you're following along in your own van the long bracket came out to 18 and a half Try this. So 
So for a backing piece, I can come out, this is the front, I can come out two inches is what I, I've got two inches to fit between the cross member and four and a half on the back, which is what I have. So what we need to do is we'll just mark center of that hole here and here. Right there. Now we can drill these. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to favor to one side. So I transferred those marks around and we have to, we want, we, we're gonna have a, have a nut right there. We wanna get that as close to that side as possible because we're really gonna be pushed uh, or tight for space right there. So we just try to estimate, I'll put that against there, estimate, you know, where, where the center of that, center of that nuts is gonna, nuts gonna be somewhere in there. Do the same thing over here. And always, always give yourself an extra 16th, man, for, for error. So if we measure that, we can see, what do we have there? We've got, essentially we've got three quarters of an inch. So what's half of three quarters is uh, 12, that's three eighths. So if we went to uh, seven sixteenths, that's where we'll have it. So I'm gonna mark that at seven sixteenths, best I can. This is not very super scientific, but it doesn't have to be. Let's come over there to seven sixteenths, right somewhere in there. So a couple years ago, oh, it's been many years ago, my dad turned me on to these uh, step bits, step drill bits here, these guys. Uh, man, these these are changed, changed my life. Uh, First ones I had were Harbor Freight, and I used those for years and years. I thought that those were just about as the cat's meow, and then they got kind of got pretty beat up. And then I bought uh, this one at Home Depot, which is uh, over in the, elect or the electrical stuff. It's the Klein makes it. It's a USA made step bit. Man, oh man, is it awesome! So normally I drill a pilot hole, but but since this is a uh, such a good bit and. Look at that, that's eighth inch steel, man. That's, I mean, that's not super heavy stuff, but that's, that's no joke. Speaking of drilling, uh, I watched a video last night. I was kind of doing some research on the stuff, uh, AVE's video. He's got a video on how drilling techniques for different, all sorts of metal, you know, really heavy stuff for guys that don't have access to machine shops and, you know, and heavy drill presses. I learned more on that than I ever did from anyone else I've ever worked with. So if you want to get some really good tips on how to drill holes in steel and hard stuff with, you know, kind of the tools that you have on hand, uh, go over there and check that out. I, I, learned a, I learned a lot from that video. I really appreciated it. Have my bolt ready. We don't want to go any bigger than we have to. This Milwaukee drill... I'm not happy with it at all. It, it, it shuts down. Whenever you start actually doing some work, it shuts down. My uh, Makita never does that. Boy, I could have I could have put that over there further. I gotta I might re be regretting that. I don't know why that's so far over there. <laughs> hmm, I might have to take the die grinder on that one, but we'll uh, we'll see. Changes everything. Oh, you know what? I'm not paying attention to what I learned from Abe's channel here. He said come over on the other side. That's right. And then deburr it. There. Now we're now we're cooking. Still got some goobers on there. Oh yeah, that's a great. Great trick, look at that. That's what I should have did over here on this one. Now it's gonna be, I don't think I went oversized, but it's. Look at that, it got that all off of there. Let's see, nope, nope, that all, that's all good. 